नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् हो मेष्ट द ब्लेसड वन दीवन द सुप्रीम लेन लाइच वन साध 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 नमो बुद्धाय विनरबल महासंग एंड मेरिटोरियस लेडी साइपर्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू लिसन टू अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल पावरफुल एक्सलेंट सूत्र Supreme Buddha preached this discourse 2000 about 2600 years ago This sutta became very significant even after the this uh, Buddha um, after the first council happened in India 3 uh, months of uh, is 3 months after the passing away of the buddha the first council took place second council after 100 years after the passing of the buddha and then 230 years after the passing of the buddha the third council took place arahant mahind bante brought the supreme teaching to sri lanka so arahant mahind bante taught this sutta to the sri lankans having heard this sutta many hundreds and thousands of sri lankans attained enlightenment so this is a very powerful sutta now we are going to learn that sutta now we know very clearly that supreme buddha was born into this world in order to realize a significant truth what is that truth the four noble truths when supreme buddha strived to realize the four noble truths the blessed one understood that this world is covered with a hard shell lives of all beings have been covered with a hard shell what is that hard shell ignorance ignorance means not knowing the four noble truths as a result all beings have to suffer enormously most of the times beings dwell in bad destinations in hell animal world and ghost world even though very rarely they 
come to human world and heavenly world they still suffer a lot supreme buddha realized the noble truth of suffering then with extraordinary knowledge supreme buddha taught the excellent dhamma with the intention of awakening other beings human beings and heavenly beings in order to be enlightened to escape from this cycle that is full of suffering supreme buddha taught that one should understand the noble truth of suffering very well one should understand the noble truth of suffering that understanding helps the disciples to eradicate the cause of suffering the second noble truth that understanding of the noble truth of suffering supports beings to attain the end of suffering the cessation of suffering which understanding the understanding of the the understanding of this suffering leads to abandon the cause of suffering and to attain the cessation of suffering if one does not understand what suffering is in this life one won't understand the rest of the noble truths the same understanding of the noble truth of suffering in death will lead the disciples to follow the way leading to the end of suffering if one does not understand the inherent suffering of this life one won't one won't uh, make efforts to stop suffering because he doesn't know that this life is full of suffering one may think that there is something in this life that we should enjoy and delight in what is the point of following a way to end suffering for that person that is why understanding the noble truth of suffering is very significant in the teachings of the buddha so this sutta basically elaborates the noble truth of suffering in details the blessed one was dwelling at savatthi in jetas grove at anatha pindika's park one day the blessed one addressed the bikus bikus those ascetics and brahmins who recollect their manifold past abodes past lives all recollect the five aggregates of clinging or a certain one among them those people if somebody has developed a special knowledge to recollect one's past lives 
one will always recollect what can they recollect as their past lives the fire aggregates of clinging or a certain one certain aggregate among them as the life so Prima explains the meaning of this statement what five when recollecting thus because I had such form in the past it is just form that one recollects this is a very beautiful teaching when recollecting one will recollect how oh, I had such form in the past I was a king many lives ago I was a king form means the body I had a body of a king I had a body of a prince I had a body of a princess it is just form that one recollects I had a body of a beggar I had a body of a merchant I had a body of a being in hell I had a body of a lion I had a body of an elephant I had a body of a snake I had a body of a fish I had a body of a bird I had a body of a worm what can they recollect it is just body of form aggregate that one recollects now we can't recollect our past lives because we don't have that concentration but Supremuda says if one can recollect one will see this there one will understand oh I had a body of a king but it also was subject to change it also faced aging that body of a uh, uh, wealthy person became otherwise that body also perished died and disappeared okay Supreme Buddha teaches when recollecting I had such a feeling in the past it is just feeling that one recollects what can one recollect F feelings when they recollect past lives how I lived in the past what kind of things I did I did in the past when they recollect they can see oh I experienced pleasant feelings unpleasant feelings neutral feelings as the life what can they see feelings arising of feelings and passing away of feelings I exp I was experiencing now they suppose now one recollects okay and one will see oh now I am experiencing this happiness oh what happened it changes oh no I don't have that happiness anymore it is just feeling that one recollects when recollecting I had such a perception in the past it is just perception that one recollects how, how did I live in the past what kind of things I did how did I enjoy this life okay one recollects 
and then understands i perceived beautiful things i perceived sweet sounds i perceived sweet smells i perceived tastes i perceived comfortable touches tangibles i perceived thoughts beautiful things but they didn't last for long it is just perception one recollects when recollecting i had such volitional formations in the past it is just volitional formations that one recollects what does one recollect volitional formations means thoughts when i lived in the past what did i think oh as a king i was thinking these wonderful thoughts but they disappear soon as a child i was thinking these beautiful beautiful things but they also changed i became a, a young man then i reached old age change constant change of volitions thoughts okay think about this knowledge of the supreme buddha when recollecting i had such consciousness in the past it is just consciousness that one recollects when i lived in the past what kind of things did i cognize through my ears sounds nose tongue body and mind what kind of things did i cognize where did i go to see beautiful things when one recollects it is just consciousness i cognized beautiful things in the world but they didn't last long see this is the meaning when one recollects there are many fall past lives all recollect the five aggregates of clinging what are the five aggregates form feeling perception volitional formations and consciousness or a certain one among them but can they recollect something permanent that they experienced no the more they recollect their past lives the more uh, changing nature they will understand then supreme buddha explains the five aggregates of clinging or in another word our life in a very scientific way so that disciples can investigate thoroughly and why because do you call it form now there is a name for this body what is that name form f o r m form what is the pali word rupa so here rupa means not only the visible objects that we see but also this body is known as rupa why do we call this body form rupa teeti bikkave rupa tasma rupanti ucchati it is deformed because therefore it is called form how is that word derived it is deformed do you know the meaning of deform 
it is subject to destruction rupateti rupa it is subject to destruction perishing vanishing changing therefore it is called form deformed by what deformed by cold in the winter if you go outside without jackets boots and hats form will <laughs> destroy disappear vanish this body we regard this body as mine myself and i am but when we go outside where is that i am <laughs> where is that self where is that boss or owner of the body <laughs> silent will die deformed by heat now soon we will have to turn on the air conditioner otherwise this form will be deformed and we will do, have to suffer a lot you will have to use fans <laughs> to fan using books papers see that's why that body has got that name form it is deformed deformed means form will turn into a distorted thing completely distorted thing we will have pale faces swearing setting and lot of problems this body we appreciate deformed by hunger that's why we gave breakfast dan <laughs> to you otherwise you would feel sleepy <laughs> right and very weak deformed by thirst we will give you gilampas deformed by contact with flies mosquitoes the uh, wind sun uh, sun and serpents don't people suffer facing these contacts sun wind serpents snakes mosquitoes flies body is deformed by many dangers it is before deformed because therefore it is called form now this is the way that we should understand the noble truth of suffering supreme buddha explains mm, when noble disciples understand the noble truth of suffering there is an easy way to do that what is that easy way one should understand the five aggregates of clinging then one will understand the noble truth of suffering fully next aggregate and why because do you call it feeling what is the second aggregate feeling वेदेतीति को भिक्कवे तस्मा वेदनाति उच्चति इन पाली फीलिंग मींस वेदना इट फील्स बिकॉज देयरफॉर इट इज कॉल्ड फीलिंग एंड व्हाट डस इट फील इट फील्स प्लेजर इट फील्स पेन इट फील्स नीदर पेन नोर प्लेजर इट फील्स don't we feel things these different uh, sensations
how do we feel things through our sense bases right when we see things feelings arise pleasant sometimes pleasant feelings sometimes unpleasant feelings sometimes neutral feelings can we uh, control this arising of feeling saying that i want to feel only pleasant feelings because this is my life can you say that feeling just feeling and why because do you call it perception what is the third aggregate sanya sanjana ti tiko bhikkave tasma sanya ti vuchati it perceives because therefore it is called perception and what does it perceive it perceives blue it perceives yellow it perceives red it perceives white what do we perceive colors now supreme buddha gives a very initial fundamental explanation about the five aggregates of clinging to get uh, some sense next one and why because do you call them volitional formations what is the fourth aggregate of clinging volitional, volitional formations in pali sankhara there is a, a very new explanation here about sankhara they construct the conditioned sankhatang abhisankharanti ti tasma sanyati vuchit sankhara ti vuchit they construct the conditioned so think about this excellent knowledge wisdom of the supreme buddha now we go to universities we go to schools we pass many exams is there any teacher that who could explain the life in this way sankhara means our thoughts thought process is something that construct the conditioned supreme buddha explains further and what is the conditioned that they construct here supreme buddha explains in this world there are things called conditioned things because of the union of many causes things arise they are called conditioned things because they arise dependent on causes and conditions will they last forever are they eternal no why when causes change the effects also change conditioned things nature of the conditioned things one condition thing is form our body this body has a reason due to causes and conditions okay so how does or how do sankhara construct this condition body supreme buddha explains this sankhara construct condition form as form listen carefully supreme buddha explains when we live we think we use our volitions to think don't we we do when we use our volitions to think always something is generated what is that 
Chetanaham Bhikkave Kammang Vadami. O monks, I say volition means Kamm. What is generated? Kamm. We, we accumulate Kamm. As a result of accumulating Kamm, we will be reborn. Bhava Pachya Jati. Dependent on arranging of Kamm, birth arises. Beings are born. Right. Volitions. As a result of our thinking process, karma is arranged. As a result, we, we will get reborn. What's the meaning of rebirth? Another body. Based on this body, when we live, we arrange karma through our volitions. What is the result? Another body. Nothing is special. What kind of body? A body that is deformed again. That is why this understanding of the noble truth of suffering leads to the disenchantment of conditioned things. Disenchantment means wise noble disciples don't delight in future forms. They don't need. Because they know every form is deformed. Even in the heavenly world, in Brahma world, anywhere in this world system, form is deformed. So volitional formations means they construct the condition form. Mm. They construct condition form as form to get another form. That's all what Sankara can do. That's all karma can do. Giving another birth. Okay. Sankara construct condition feeling as feeling. Experiencing feeling in this life, we generate karma. We will die one day as a result of constructing the condition. We will have a new life. Again, what will we have? Feelings. Pleasant feelings, unpleasant feelings, neutral feelings. They will all disappear quickly. They construct condition perception as perception. Perceiving things, we think about the objects. We say, oh, it's very nice, delicious, wonderful, very pretty. Okay, volitions, karma. As a result, when we get reborn, we will have another life. Another life means khandanam patubhav, appearance of the five aggregates of clinging again. Always we will be on the same bought they construct condition volitional formations as volitional formations using our thoughts we think about many things we will die and then when we take rebirth somewhere else again we will have a mind and we will think, will we be able to satisfy our life completely? No. We will die there as well and continuous process of rebirth. That's what Sankara can do. Karma. They construct condition consciousness as consciousness. 
using our consciousness when we cognize things when we know things we think about them and we go home and we think oh i saw that thing it's so very beautiful using our consciousness we we think again and again each moment we generate karma because we think based on our ignorance and craving so karma is accumulated we will be reborn again and then again we will have an eye ear nose tongue body and mind we will cognize again while this process is happening we will reach all age experiencing sickness again death okay so now do you understand the meaning of sankhara here in the sense of uh, the they construct the condition they construct the condition this karma cannot uh, construct an unconditioned thing karma always can construct only conditioned things that is that are subject to change but noble eight fall path can generates an unconditioned thing what is that nibbana is unconditioned no aging no rebirth no sickness no death no sorrow no pain no lamentation no death no change why it is unconditioned sankhara can do that but the noble eight fall path can do that okay so that is the whole aggregate of sankhara next so premud explains with extraordinary knowledge and why because do you call it consciousness as a pali word for consciousness vijnana vijnanati ti ko bhikkave tasma vijnananti vuchyati so you know when arahant mahindbante was teaching these things how our ancestors grasped this teaching to become enlightened because very deep dhamma that is how our ancestors touched this dhamma okay vijnana it cognizes because therefore it is called consciousness and what does it cognize it cognizes sour it cognizes bitter it cognizes sweet it cognizes sharp it cognizes mild it cognizes salty this is about the consciousness of tongue don't we cognize the different tastes okay what what does Uh, help us to do that our consciousness is cognizing process differentiate oh now you are experiencing salty you are experiencing sweet you are experiencing honey right consciousness does this okay this is the life consists of five aggregates of clinging now a noble disciple gets some understanding about this life okay life means body there is a body there are feelings there are perceptions there are volitional formations there is consciousness this is life they all in a constantly changing constantly changing process because of ignorance we call we regard this changing process i am myself and mine as a result we fall 
into this cycle of birth and death again and again and again. After this point, Supreme Buddha explains the way to the way out. The way to stop this continuous construction of conditioned. Right? So this life is a conditioned one. Fire grades of clinging again and again. Now the solution. To stop what? To stop the obtaining of fire aggregates of clinging again and again. Do we need to stop that obtaining of fire aggregates of clinging again and again? First one should have that necessity, need. Why? That's why one should understand that fire aggregates of clinging means suffering. Everything is out of my control. My dreams will never come true. That's why they want to stop this process. Okay? For them, there is the instruction of the enlightened one. They are in because the instructed noble disciple reflects thus. I am now being devoured by form. I am now being devoured by form. I am now being eaten by form. Being chewed by form. Khajjani. The name of this sutta is Khajjani Sutta. Being devoured. Normally we think we eat food, we eat cake, we eat apples. But here, we are eaten by what? We are eaten by our body. So Pramita explains, a noble disciple thinks, I am now being eaten, devoured by form. In the past two, okay, uh, Let's first understand how we are now being devoured by form. How? Yes. So Primud explains. Many are the sufferings, many are the disadvantages of this body. Form means yeah, body. Since diverse diseases are engendered in this body, such as the following, eye disease, ear disease, nose disease, tongue disease, body disease, why are these many of hospitals all around the world? Form is devoured by? Fong, yes. Lives are eaten, being eaten by diseases. Headache, mumps, mouth disease, toothache, cough, asthma, kata, heartburn, heartburn, fever, stomach ailment, fainting, dysentery, Swelling, gripes, leprosy, boils, scrofula, consumption, epilepsy, ringworm, itch, eruption, tetter, pistola, plethora, diabetes, piles, cancer, fistula and diseases originating from bile, diseases originating from phlegm, diseases originating from wind, diseases originating from conflict of the humors, from changes of weather. Think about when winter comes, how many diseases? <laughs> Everybody is ready with their deformed 
forms. <laughs> yes, right? From adverse conditions, faulty deportment, using body in uh, dangerous ways, from devices practiced by others, from karma vipaka, some diseases result of, as a result of karma from previous lives. Coal is also a disease, Supreme Mother explains. Heat is a disease. Hunger is a disease. Thirst is a disease. Going to washroom is also a disease. Extremant and urine. Right? So, we are being devoured by form our body. Should we think, should we cling to this body then? This is my excellent body. We decorate it. We show off. We appreciate it highly. That is why we haven't yet escape from this suffering okay so how uh, how does a noble uh, disciple reflect I am now being devoured by form eaten by form he thinks further in the past too I was devoured by form in the very same way that I am now being eaten by present form. Now we talked about past lives. In our previous lives also we had beautiful bodies as kings, princes, dancers, actors, actresses, right? We had beautiful bodies. What happened to them? They also face the same destiny. And he reflects further. If I were to seek delight in future form, seek delight in future form means thinking about future future life uh, in the future and even in this present life in the future I would have uh, such a body long hair beautiful eyes right bright skin don't don't people think that way right in the future if I were to seek delight in future form I would enjoy form in the future in this way in that way I would seek delight in form. Then in the future too I shall be devoured by form. I shall be eaten by form in the very same way that I am now being devoured by present form. What will happen to that future form? It also will give immense suffering to us. Think about people in the hospitals, how they suffer, how they lament. Do we have a special kind of life? No, we don't know, maybe tomorrow we will have to lie on the bed in the hospital. This did not happen only one time to us. We have been experiencing this in, in uncalculable times. Right? That is why Supreme Buddha had great compassion. Important to understand this as well about form, how we are devoured by form. Because otherwise uh, we will have to live uh, with uh, deluded, delusional lives. That's not going to help us giving true happiness. 
this uh, this is an example explained by the buddha monk suppose there were a girl oh in her 15th or 16th year neither too tall nor too short neither too thin nor too fat neither too dark nor too fair is she beautiful the supreme buddha asked the monks is she beautiful is her beauty and loveliness then at its height yes bante because later on one might see that same girl here at 80 90 or 100 years aged as crooked as a roof bracket doubled up supported by a walking stick tottering frail her youth gone her teeth broken gray haired scanty haired bald right what happens to the decorating things <laughs> disappeared wrinkled skin bright skin is wrinkled with limbs all blotchy black dots area no cream no use of anything okay what do you think because has her former beauty and loveliness vanished and the danger become evident think about the suffering that we are going to face in the future when we have this destiny in the future is it suffering or happiness suffering this is not the first time that we are going to face that that's why one should stop this cycle again one might see that same woman afflicted suffering and gravely ill lying fouled in her own urine and excrement now is there a beautiful girl very old grandmother lifted up by some and sat sat down by others won't this happen to us surely what do you think because has her former beauty and loveliness vanished and the danger become evident yes ma'am this is how we are being devoured by form our own form again one might see that some woman as a corpse thrown aside in a charnel ground what has happened to her yes passed away one now where is her house beautiful house mansion yeah a cemetery under the ground mixing with soil one two or three days dead blotted livid and oozing matter or from all the openings of the life body this will happen to us what do you think because what has happened to her he has been devoured by a form again because one might see that same woman as a corpse thrown aside in a charnel ground being devoured by crows hogs vultures dogs jackals and various various kinds of worms again one might see that same woman as a skeleton after some time with flesh and blood held together with sinews after some time a fleshless skeleton smeared with blood a skeleton without flesh and blood right gradually it changes and one might see her with disconnected bones scattered in all directions 
here a head bone there a foot bone here a thigh bone there a rib bone here a hip bone there a backbone here the skull bones bleed okay scatter everywhere what has happened form has been devoured by yes we have been devoured by our form and then gradually the skeleton will turn into bones bleached white the color of shells and bones heaped up more than a year old then bones rotted and crumbled to dust a part of the ground where is me where is i am where is myself this is what we should understand supreme would explain with extraordinary knowledge now he has this understanding having reflected thus how that reflection is very important i am now being devoured by form next one in the past too i was devoured by form in the very same way that i am now being devoured by present form present form is with this present body next reflection if i were to seek delight in future form then in the future to i shall be devoured by form in the very same way that i am now being devoured by present form i am now being eaten by present form if we think about going to heaven and enjoy heavenly places that heavenly body also will be devoured till change having reflected thus about present form past form and future form he becomes indifferent towards past form he does not seek delight in future form he becomes indifferent towards past form means he doesn't want to think about the past oh i had a wonderful life in the past see look at my pictures and photos see i was very very pretty when i was young he, she does not want to be deluded like that right becomes indifferent he does not seek delight in future form why she knows what will happen in the future what will happen to the future form he or she is practicing for revulsion towards present form for its fading away and cessation if one wants to stop obtaining numerous bodies in the future that are subject to destruction one should practice this dhamma to understand the true nature of this present body that's why mindfulness and meditation practice comes okay so so that is how one should understand the which aggregate the form aggregate of clinging now did the supreme would explain very well why we shouldn't cling to this form supreme would explain very clearly so in the same way uh, supreme would explains uh, a noble disciple reflects i am now being devoured by feeling devoured by perception devoured by volitional formations and being devoured by consciousness what is the meaning here devouring by this mental aggregates in the same way even though we think uh, that we experiencing wonderful we experience wonderful things 
pleasant things they will not last long and they will mm, become otherwise so our own feeling like heat us right suppose we are experiencing something wonderful all of a sudden what happens it changes it's like that feeling heat uh, us okay so in this case to a noble disciple things i don't uh, if i uh, now i am being devoured by feeling perception volitions consciousness so uh, in the past too i was devoured by these things in the very same way that i am now being devoured in the present feeling perception volitions and consciousness if i were to seek delight in future feelings future perceptions future volitions future consciousness then in the future too i shall be eaten by these things i shall be destroyed i shall be punished by these things they are not my friends these fire griefs are not our friends they are like enemies aren't they if if this body can put us in on a bed in a hospital will a friend do that no it's like an enemy this body is going to give us a walking stick okay go with this for the rest of your life <laughs> like an enemy i i will be punished by the aggregates so having reflected thus he or she becomes indifferent towards past feelings past perceptions past volitions and past consciousness he or she does not seek delight in future feelings future perceptions future volitions future consciousness meaningless and he or she is practicing for the revulsion uh, to understand the meaningless nature of these things for its fading away and cessation that is the, that is the way that is the way out so we can use this present body present feeling present perception present volition volitions and present consciousness to understand our whole journey why we should understand that to cling to them no to become disenchanted to give up to give up desires to give up craving to give up hopes to give up wishes and then supreme would explain uh, so you should uh, contemplate impermanence of these four aggregates of clinging suffering and non self nature that is the meditation we do normally uh, inside meditation so it comes after that explanation seeing thus because the instructed noble disciple experiences revulsion towards four aggregates of clinging experiencing revulsion he becomes dispassionate abandon passion craving towards the fire grips of clinging through this passion his or her mind is liberated when it is liberated there comes the knowledge it is liberated he understands destroyed is birth what happened destroyed is birth means stopped rebirth stopped rebirth means stop the process of obtaining what five aggregates of clinging finished 
The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more for this state of being. There is no rebirth anymore in this cycle. End of suffering. Kajaniya Sutta from Sangyutta Nikaya. May all of us have the opportunity to understand the true nature of the noble truth of suffering, the fire grace of clinging, and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana, end of suffering, in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu. Sad, Sad, Namo Buddhaya.